In this video, we are going over how to take your chances in football if you wanna be a better goal scorer. You need to learn how to be ruthless in front of net. So that's what we're gonna be going over next. What's up guys? If you're new to this channel, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer where we are producing videos almost every single day to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any of the content that we release. Now, like I've mentioned already, I wanna go over how you can start taking more of your chances in football because even if you're getting a lot of chances and you're having many different opportunities to score, if you don't know how to put the ball away, if you don't have the right mindsets and right practice in your repertoire, it's going to be hard to actually score goals. So I want to go over some things that are going to help you. The first one is the most obvious one and one that's going to help you the most and it's repetition, repetition, repetition. Look, if your striking technique is not good, your shooting technique is not good, the solution is practice. If your finishing's not that great, you can't curl the ball into the opposite corner or take it near post um, 10 times out of 10, nine times out of 10, you need to work on that. If you're one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and you miss more than you score, then you need more repetition, you need more muscle memory, you need more reference points so that when you find yourself in a match, that you've practiced enough to actually score the goal. Because think about it, if you're continually missing these in practice, if you can't um, curl the ball to the opposite corner, if you can't do um, these finishes, um, if your technique when you strike the ball isn't clean almost all of the time in practice, then you're not gonna be able to do it in the match. So one of the best ways to practice repetition is to get to a wall and practice hitting the ball cleanly over and over again, or get one of your goalkeeper friends, go to the field and practice beating him in different situations over and over again. And I promise you, the more that you do that, the better at this you will get in matches. The second one is composure and calmness. Now again, a lot of this is gonna be developed on the training pitch. It's gonna be developed by you practicing your finishing over and over again, but it's also a mentality. It's understanding that if you panic or you rush when you're in a goal scoring opportunity or in a goal scoring or have a goal scoring chance that you're most likely going to pick the wrong option. You need to be able to make that decision within a split second but in a very calm and cool manner. For example, most of the time in a finishing situation when you're one-on-one -on -one with the keeper or you're close to goal, a simple side-footed finish to either corner is all you need but a lot of players tend to lose their composure and try and hit the ball as hard as they can. The most common, actually, uh, kind of loss of composure and the, the most common thing that happens when a player does that in front of net is they just smash it. They try and hit it as hard as they can, hoping that that will go in. And every now and then it will, but most of the time it will not. You should have an idea of where you wanna put the ball. You should have an idea of what you wanna do. Um, ultimately, you wanna be able to work on instinct um, and that comes again through repetition and practice. But remember, keep your cool in these situations and calmly slot it to the corner or chip the keeper or take it around him. But don't just go for the default blast unless you're really good at being able to blast it towards the corner, which you can get good at. But make sure you are keeping that composure, keeping that calmness and sticking to what your instincts are telling you. Because again, if you panic, you're most likely gonna miss. Now, speaking of your instincts, number three is follow them. Follow your instincts, that intuitive idea that comes up in the moment of truth. Now, your instincts are trained on the pitch because your instinct might tell you to chip the keeper, but if you haven't worked on that technique, then even though your instincts and decisions in the right place, you might mess up the technique. Your instincts might tell you, okay, you need to curl the ball towards that back corner, or you need to fake the shot and then slot it in, or you need to make that run for the tap in. You know, but if you've not practiced executing these things, it's not going to work. However, you need both of these to work together. You having the technique through practice and then following your instincts. I've scored so many many great goals through following my instincts. In situations where you wouldn't understand really my decision process in doing the thing, but I still score. Like for example, I've had uh, times when I could have brought the ball down and gotten closer to goal in order to score, but my instincts told me to hit it first time, and it ends with me scoring. That's uh, just one example. You want to follow your instincts, they're rarely wrong, but make sure you're working on your technique so that you can actually implement what your instincts are telling you. The best finishers in the game, the most ruthless strikers are the ones that listen to their instincts. And again, the reason for this is if you overthink when you're in a goal scoring opportunity, um, this has to do with composure. A lack of composure will manifest itself in you overthinking. If you overthink, you will most likely miss. If you follow your instincts and your technique is good, you will most likely score. 
Now, number four is another one you need to work on, but it's something that all great goal scorers have, and it's develop a, an amazing first touch. Master your first touch because I cannot tell you how many chances I've seen players miss and I used to miss too because my first touch wasn't good or because their first touch wasn't good. You know, you need to know when you need to take the shot first time, but you cannot be taking four, five, six, seven touches in most situations to set yourself up for the shot. Ideally, you take one touch that sets you up for your shot and then your finish is the second touch. And you can even see this in the professional level when they lose their cool, a player loses their cool um, or just panics or gets too excited to rush a blood to the head and they take a poor first touch and it takes them away from, from goal and the keeper is able to close the angle and block the shot where if they took a better touch more centrally down to their feet, their second touch is an easy finish. Work on your first touch heavily. You need to get good at finishes where you take one first touch quickly out of your feet perfectly that sets you up for the shot giving you many different options. If your first touch takes you too far out wide or the ball gets too far away from you, you've ruined that opportunity. The, the opportunity is going to close up or it's going to be blocked or you're not going to score where if you took a good first touch, you would. So really heavily work on your first touch in all different types of way off your chest, thighs, your feet, inside, outside, top of the foot, all of that because nothing will help you score goals more, at least when it comes to another skill, than having a crisp, um, really deliberate, really good first touch. Number five, guys, is a mindset and have the mindset of ruthlessness. Be ruthless in front of goal. Think that every opportunity that comes your way, you're going to score. Now, I keep talking about the best goal scorers, but another trait of the best goal scorers is even if they only get one chance or two chances in the match, like it's a match where the other team's playing great defense, is limiting the ball coming in, where he's not getting good service. The best strikers are ruthless, and therefore they get one chance and they still score. Now, of course, you want to be doing things where you're not just getting one chance a match, but be ruthless. Take your chances. Develop the mentality of being ruthless. You don't delay. You don't dally. You just put the ball in the back of the net, right? You only need one chance. You think every single time you have an opportunity, you're going to score, which is a great mindset to develop, the mindset of I'm going to score. I don't care if you miss, that's in the past, because right now in this opportunity, I'm going to score. So start developing that mindset in your training and when you're in matches because it does not serve you to doubt yourself when you're in a goal scoring opportunity. And in fact, that has to do with composure. And if you doubt yourself, you start to overthink, you start to panic, and you will most likely miss the chance. Have confidence, be ruthless in front of goal. And you know, even if your team's up by a lot, you know, keep being ruthless. You know, the best strikers, the best goal scorers, they don't let back and they don't hold back. They're ruthless and they score every opportunity that, that, that they can that comes their way. All right, guys, question of the day is out of all of these things, one, which are you best at? And two, which do you need to work on the most? Leave your comments down below and I'll answer as many as I can. Thanks guys so much for tuning into the video. Let me know what you think. And if you want similar videos to this, uh, make sure you check out the other two videos up on screen so that you can continue to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. As always, make sure you get my free ebook if you have not already 33 ways to improve as a player and stand out. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.